What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Honeystead. This morning I got my call for one of my very first swarm calls and it turned out to be a bust, but that's okay. I realized that I probably should do a video and I probably should show you guys some of the things that I have with me when I go on a swarm call. So this morning got my phone call went to go get all my stuff ready, realized that somebody had already came and gotten the bees, which is totally fine. Um, but I think this is a good opportunity for me to share with you guys some of the things that I put together um, that I have on me this time of year because when we get swarm calls, it is nothing for us to get multiple swarm calls in the same day. So let's grab all the stuff and I'll share it with you. Let's see if we can make this thing work. Okay, so what happens when you see a swarm, okay? And a swarm is just a cluster of bees that have gathered and collected themselves somewhere where they're in kind of transition into finding their new home. Now a swarm is not necessarily a bad thing. I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, my bees swarmed. Well, there's two different types of swarming. There's swarming as in reproductive, um, which means the mother colony of honeybees decided that they have outgrown their space and they want to then split. So what will happen is the, the original queen, along with other queens, because I've caught multiple queens in a swarm, um, like the younger queens, they will leave. They will leave that entire colony, but there will be bees that will be left um, with a new queen. So what they'll do is they'll gather and they'll collect and hang out until the scout bees that are flying um, find a new home. And then when they find a new home, they come back to the colony, they start telling all the sisters and then they, and even, you know, the drones, the boys, um, and then they take back off in flight and move into, uh, move into their home. Now, swarming is one of my favorite activities <laughs> um, on our homestead and I get very excited about this time of year. I mean, like I typically am constantly checking my messages because people are saying like, they'll reach out to me and they'll say, hey, we have a swarm. Now, I tend to get my stuff together. I'm a little late to the game because we are already starting to experience swarms in our area. Um, but some of the items that I use for when I go and I rescue bees, obviously I have my suit with me. I also have gloves with me. I will you know, keep my boots with me. Typically this stuff will go uh, and sit by the front door. I am actually gonna go ahead and plan on putting another... You good? I will have another suit um, in here just in case because I don't know if sometimes if I'm on the road and I've had that happen where I'll be driving and then somebody will say hey I've got a swarm and I'll just quick u-turn go and I'll grab it now what I found to be helpful for um, when I get a swarm call is I will use a sheet or a tablecloth and I'll lay it underneath of where the swarm is then I will go and I'll grab my box. I have used, I typically will just use a nuke box. I think it's a lot easier um, because basically if I catch them in this box and I already have a honeybee <laughs> flying around here. Um, if I catch them in this box, actually that's a mason bee. That's not, I don't think that's a honeybee. Yeah, that's a little mason bee. Um, okay, you can go. <laughs> um, but what I'll do is I'll catch them in the nuke box and then I will just bring them to the apiary and I'll set them where their hive is going to end up being and I leave them alone. Don't mess with them. Just leave them alone. Now for my nuke box, I have used brand new frames um, in the past. I feel like the bees, it's like 50-50 on that. What I have found to actually keep the bees around when I go to catch a swarm is by giving them an already somewhat fully furnished apartment. So I keep 
um, some of my my drawn out um, some of my drawn out frames some of the comb the smell of the the comb um, and the pheromones the past pheromones of of the actual bees I feel like tends to keep them around a little bit more so I will I will go ahead and I'll, I'll fill up my nuke box with the combs that I plan on using then after I get them over there move them into their apiary um, sometimes I'll actually give them a frame of, of pollen and a frame of nectar I've even if I've questioned if I haven't gotten the queen I've even opened up and pulled and given them a frame of, of day-old egg from another colony that I've had just in case because if I may have not gotten that queen uh, there's a chance that they will create a new queen and they'll stick around they tend to definitely stick around at least if they are are given um, something to do something to stay busy so that is a quick tip on what I found to help you know catch the bees now other things other things that I've used uh, and I've I just ordered some more of these because I didn't know if I was going to need them or not but these are like the mesh mesh bags um, that I've actually like put the nuke box in and sealed if I'm driving around in this car if I'm in my truck it's not that big of a deal but it's not always that fun <laughs> to be driving around your car with bees flying and I have absolutely driven around you know bees are flying and I've had my suit on so I had to reorder some mesh bags now when I get a swarm call one of the things that I do ask is like hey can you send me a picture so I can actually see it you'd be surprised how many people will take a picture of like the paper wasp nest and think that it's a swarm but it's actually not um, so that's very helpful especially before I actually hop on the road and move fast now the other things that I've used are step ladders if the homeowner has a ladder I'll use their ladder I have MacGyvered some pretty crazy stuff <laughs> to do swarm calls like one swarm was all the way up in a pine tree which is the absolute worst to try to catch uh, catch a swarm in because the all the pine needles um, but I've had to take rope tie it around some duct tape fling it over the branch and then pull the branch down low enough to where I can grab it that 100% has it was MacGyvering <laughs> like I'm like I need a pineapple some duct tape and I do have a paper clip <laughs> so at least uh, I don't know why that's in there but we're gonna keep it in there um, but definitely those are some of my top items that I use for when I do my swarm calls um, and the biggest thing is is just if you are brand new to beekeeping and you are afraid about afraid about going on a swarm call don't don't be especially if it's an easy one and it's low-lying uh, a lot of times they're super gentle um, you don't necessarily have too much to worry about because they don't have anything to defend um, I've been able to go and just barehanded grab a swarm and you know basically let them walk down into the box but it is truly probably the most magical feeling uh, about catching a swarm so I'm disappointed I didn't get to share with you guys that today but at least I can kind of share with you how I prepare um, there's a few things that I'm gonna add in here definitely some duct tape <laughs> definitely some rope and then I may or may not keep my stepladder in here it just really depends now the majority of the bees that I have here in my apiary come from swarms come from rescuing come from my bees even swarming and then they like to play that little game with me like can you catch me so you know again it's it's just <laughs> just something that I love um, and yes it is fully catching catching feelings because it is the most magical feeling um, not only to be in in the middle of a swarm um, but to be able to see the bees at that state and how docile they are and then also um, have that opportunity to kind of talk with homeowners and teach them about what the bees are doing and the majority of them you know end up following the story and kind of being a part of the bees which I think is pretty amazing but we are getting ready to get hit with some pretty severe thunderstorms today and I need to go ahead and make sure that all of my bees are 
ratchet strapped down to the hive stands just because that would be absolutely devastating if the the wind picks up and then i wanted to tell you about this past weekend and um what i got to do i've been meaning to get in here and do a couple of hive inspections with you guys but it has been just a little bit crazy the last couple of weeks um, I, if you have followed along, I kind of have shared with you little bits and pieces on places that I have maybe been and seen, if maybe you possibly could guess and see where I was. But I was asked to go down to Asheville, North Carolina to do an actual uh, hands-on workshop, a beekeeping workshop at Justin and Rebecca Rhodes Homestead, which is absolutely beautiful. They, Rebecca has wanted to get bees for quite some time and it actually worked out perfectly that we were able to get them hooked up, um, get them set up and actually do a, like this is how you keep bees but not only that but why uh, the reasons why I'm keeping bees I think is a lot larger than than how to keep bees um, and we definitely talked about it especially since I'm an herbalist I do tie both of my worlds together they were able to film my YouTube channel while I was down there and then we also recorded a podcast which I thought was a lot of fun I really loved how they had their podcast area set up in that barn but one of the things that I was excited about was they have a network station called Abundance Plus uh, which is where we actually filmed the entire workshop on getting started into beekeeping and then sharing the herbalism aspect and, and talking about the medicinal byproducts of honeybees as well as you know doing a hive inspection and identifying all of it it was a blast and it was two days packed of a whole bunch of information and they they had a film crew out they were able to document it and um yeah i really absolutely loved it and going down south and seeing like the plants and the bees and all the activity made me want so bad to just come back here and get excited because we are we will be where they're at here in the next couple of weeks um but yeah it was an absolute blast if you guys are interested in learning about that workshop i'm gonna put a link down below i'll also pin it in the description um so that if you want to watch and, and see see that workshop it will be it will be available there but I wanted to come up here and make sure all of these girls are completely ratchet strapped down we are getting ready to get hit with a nasty storm and I think some high winds I did hear some thunder earlier so luckily these girls are gentle enough right now um, but I do think that I maybe have a colony that moved into one of my empty boxes. Uh, so I'm gonna go peek and see what's going on so I can plan, plan on moving those girls over here with these. Yeah, I would put money on it <laughs> that we had a swarm move in. And I am just fine with that. The way that they're acting, look at them, they're fanning their wings, they're letting all their sisters know, hey, this is home. If I start seeing anybody that has any pollen on their on their back legs, I would say that that's a good sign that it's queen right, and uh, possibly might be a good a good sign. I didn't see any activity in this one a couple of uh, about a week ago, so this is definitely new. I want to open them up, but. Not in this weather. I think we're getting ready to get hit soon, so I do have to move fast, but I feel like we're gonna come back to this colony. This one might be the first one that we are gonna inspect and see what is, what's going on. I thought I saw one just land with some pollen, but I mean, they're on guard. That's the best way, easiest way to catch easiest way to catch a swarm just set up set up a trap um, for an empty hive now you can build traps swarm traps and hang them in trees I have one down at the bottom of the property um, I plan on putting a few more up I've been meaning to build one with you guys and actually film that process I just haven't been able to uh, to get that one on the actual planning books to do because it's kind of one of those things like they just move in so you know but I, I do need to go ahead and plan on 
on uh, building a swarm trap with you guys so that we can we can show you guys how you can build three swarm traps out of one piece of plywood but if you don't have that and you have a couple of empty boxes around they will 100% move <laughs> move right in yep wind's starting to really pick up and these clouds are moving in it looks like i'm gonna go finish taking care of all my animals before the storm sets in but i wanted to make sure the bees were good and also share with you guys all the all the news but yeah as always don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old bye guys <laughs>